Those of God, man, you know it's right. This message lines up with the Bible perfect, man. It's all about submission to God. It's all about victory in Jesus. That's the only place you're going to get the victory. I'll stand before God and I'll say, you know what? I tried to give it to Him as straight as I could from the Word. And they rejected it. But Joshua is being faithful to bring the message of God to the people of God. So their reaction to the message was actually the people's reaction to God Himself. I might be Balaam's ass tonight is my point. I might be the one that's saying, you know, haven't I been a good donkey? <laughs> you know? Haven't I been a good ass all these years to you? And you smote him. And you smote him. And you say, you know what, Randy's a sinner. I know Randy's sin. He's got this problem. And you missed the whole point. You missed the whole point. I'm trying to bring you a message from God, and you know it. There's something in the camp that's got to go, or else this AI is going to keep destroying you. This AI will destroy your family. This AI will take your joy. This AI will break your fellowship with the Lord, not steal your salvation. I didn't say that. But you will lose your fellowship with the Lord. Why? Because you're going to be living in the penalty box by your own choice. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Why won't you give him your all? You owe it to him, don't you? I think we can park it there. I think we can park it right there. But hopefully this message just try to get you back on track with the Lord. It's not a message of condemnation. Jesus Christ paid it all for you, my friend. You don't have to sit here and be a defeated Christian. God has given you all the tools that Billy Sunday had available to him. God has given you all the tools that Paul the Apostle had available to him. God has given you all the tools that George Whitfield and John Wesley had available to them. You have the same God. You know what? You, have the, you serve the same God that Moses served. You serve the same God that Elijah, who called down fire from heaven, served. That's the same God. You look at your problems. How about 400 prophets of Baal getting ready to kill you? You don't think that took a little bit of faith to walk into? Like, God, uh, could you call down fire from heaven for me? And You serve the same God. What's your excuse? You think you could meet Moses or Elijah or uh, Daniel and, and say, you know what? You guys were real great guys, man, and I could never be like that. Maybe that's the fact. But you know what? They'd probably look at you and be like, you know what? You have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, man. You had the blood of Jesus Christ covering all your sins. We had to go give sacrifices of bulls and goats and do all this. And you know what? Jesus just paid it all for you. Couldn't you have prayed a little more? Couldn't you have read a little more? Couldn't you have told a couple more people? Couldn't you have done all to stand? Well, think about this. When you stand before God, it's not going to be His fault. God was willing. God just set it all in front of you. And He said, all you got to do is reach out and just take it. Well, God, it's just too far to reach. It's right in front of you. No, but God, it's just too hard. Why is it too hard? Well, it's inconvenient. I want to sleep in. Oh, it was right in front of you if you want to sleep in. I mean, you know what? You know with the manna that came from heaven? They had to get up early to get it. God's the same with you. He puts it out there early. But you know what? Too many Christians are sleeping. You're, you're asleep. And you need to be woken up. 
And if you don't wake up, the thief will come and steal. He's going to steal things from you. If you don't wake up. If you don't snap out of it. If you don't come to your senses. If you don't leave the muck and the mire. If you don't leave the pig slop. If you don't leave Egypt. You know, I mean, they, they would bicker and complain and moan at Moses while they're walking around in the wilderness. But it would have been more honorable to die in the wilderness than in the slave enslavement of the devil himself in Egypt. You get that? Your life is harder now that you became a Christian, isn't it? It's sure. Yeah, because you can't drink anymore. You can't smoke anymore. I mean, hey, I'm, there's not a wall between you and doing it. But you know the Holy Ghost will smote you if you go back to that stuff. So it's like, where's your refuge? How do you get a break? How do you loosen up? You can't get a nightcap, can you? All you got is Jesus. It's not video games. It's not television. It's not movies. None of that's going to fit for you. None of that's going to work for you. Why? Because you've tasted. You've tasted the goodness of the Lord. And you're crucifying them again. You've tasted it. Nothing else will do. It's like that heroin addict, man. Once they get that first hit, man, they're hooked. And you've tasted Jesus Christ. Nothing else will do. And you know, you, you try to go back to your old things. You know, oh, this used to fulfill me. But it doesn't work anymore. Oh, this used to fulfill me. But it doesn't work anymore. There's only one avenue you're going to get that fulfillment. And it's the God of the King James Bible. He's the only one that can fulfill your every need. And if you don't go after Him, you're going to pay dearly. And as a pastor, you know, who am I, man? Who am I? I'm, I'm just a person, you know? I got my own struggles. But you know, you guys, you guys encourage me. You know, and it breaks my heart to see your heart breaking. It breaks my heart to see you struggling with things that you don't need to be struggling with. It breaks my heart. Who am I, man? You don't got to please me. I'm not telling you to please me, but I'm just telling you as a brother in the Lord, it hurts. It hurts when the answer is right in front of you and you won't take it. It's like when you're trying to witness to somebody. Man, they're just lost as hell. And you're just trying to say, no, it's so easy. Just put your faith and trust in the death, burial, and the resurrection. No, I can't do that. And they give you an argument, the evolution argument. You shut it down. They're like, then they give you another argument. You shut it down. And God's given all the verses and all the answers. And you're like, man, I didn't know I could even know all this stuff. And guess what? They still won't take it. Man, you're just sitting there like, why won't you get saved, man? You know what? How I'm feeling is, why won't you walk with the Lord now that you're saved? Why? Why? What do you have to lose? You gave your life to Him, didn't you? Don't you call Him Lord? Lord, right? Lord? He says jump, you say how high. That's how the relationship should be. But now he's saying jump and you say tomorrow. Or he says jump and you got the headphones on. Or he says jump and you're just nowhere to be found. Gone. A wall. You're not standing your post. God has a job for you. And if you don't do your job, no one else is going to do it. There's going to be a breach. You know, this group here will only be as strong as the weakest link. Are you the weakest link? We want to strengthen you. Are you the weakest link? Jesus Christ died for you, my friend. Are you the weakest link? The blood of Jesus Christ can make you stronger than anyone in here. Are you the weakest link? Are you going to stay the weakest link? You don't make the decision tonight. You're going to stay that way. 
Why would you stay that way? You know, I, God told Israel, oh, why would you die in your sins? Now, you know you're saved if you put your trust in the Lord, but why would you die in your sins? Sin will kill you if you don't get, get it right eventually. That sin will slit your throat. And some of you, it looks like the blade's about halfway. Why? Why, man? Seek the Lord while He may be found. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Seek Him while He can be found. Let's pray.